Yeah, we got a problem. A whole nother storm is on the way, and it's a major storm at that. Let me tell you, this thing's going to bring a lot of impacts in terms of blizzards, lots of snow for some folks, tornadoes, and also potentially some flooding, and also, again, maybe a little bit of a wind threat for the northeast. So a lot of things to go over in this forecast. We're going to get right into it. All right, first, we're going to start off with the snow and pushing this forward. You can see that it's really going to start off there in southern South Dakota, going into Nebraska at around 10 a.m. on the 11th here and then pushing this even further might even start to see some snow pushing in from New Mexico into t northern Texas there near Amarillo and then now look back up here heavier snow starting to fall here in Kansas going into Missouri Iowa by around 11 p.m. on the 11th and then pushing into the the 12th in the morning hours here we got a lot of snow still happening over here in Iowa now pushing into Illinois and Wisconsin and southern Minnesota there and then pushing this even further into the 12th on 8 a.m. You can see a lot more snow is starting to fall here in Wisconsin and some heavier snow is making it across one of the Great Lakes and about to enter Michigan with some northern snow here for Illinois. Still have some snow extending all the way back um, from Iowa into Kansas and Nebraska. And look at this down here. A little bit of a heavier snow band is possible on the back side of the storm here for southern Missouri going into Arkansas. Pushing this a little bit further, that snow lifts out of Arkansas and starts to fall over here in in central Missouri and then up here you can see Michigan Wisconsin are getting the heaviest amounts with some residual snow over here in Iowa Nebraska and Kansas by around 11 a.m. on the 12th and it's pushing this even further man look at that big time snow transition and snow heavy snow falling all the way from northern Illinois northern Indiana even in parts of northwestern Ohio and Michigan I mean just look at this these white colors on this map is higher uh, snowfall rates here and people are really going to be uh, getting a decent amount of snow out of this. I mean, this is looking like quite the impressive storm and then pushing this forward just a little bit more until this thing really kind of moves out of the country here. You can see that we do have uh, a lot of snow moving up into Canada with some residual snow falling in the backside all the way from Wisconsin down into Illinois, Indiana and Ohio and then pushing this over to the northeast. You can see that we are going to be um, starting to track some of this heavier snow that's going to be moving into the mountainous regions of New York going into Vermont and Maine. Looking at the total snowfall across the region, you can see we have a little bit of an escalation here in the confidence of higher snowfall totals than we did on the last forecast here. And as you can see from Kansas up in Nebraska, going to have four to five inches possible there. Uh, and those four to five inches are going to start to move into northern Missouri, into central Missouri as well. We could have two to three inches possible there near Kansas City. Going down a little bit further south towards Springfield, maybe a dusting to an inch and then maybe a dusting to an inch there near Fayetteville, Arkansas, and then moving back up to the north here for Iowa. Again, one of the hot spots here for some heavier snow with 8, 9, 10, 11 inches there around the area of Des Moines to the north of that, and then pushing into northern Illinois. I mean, look at this, 9, 10, getting up into the 12 inch, and then near the coast here, just to the north of Chicago, 13 inches are going to be possible there, and then just right over Chicago City, potentially 9 to 10 inches there, moving up a little bit to the north, 12, 13, 16 inches there in Wisconsin being surrounded by a big band here of 9 to 10 inches extending all the way down uh, to the south there and the further you go north the less you're gonna get and then coming over to Michigan I mean look at this four to five inches in the southern portions even four to five inches there for northern Indiana then as we go further to the north I mean it's just gonna be a big old glob of snow here from 16 15 maybe even getting up almost to two feet of snow there in Michigan and then in northern Ohio Ohio. I know we got a lot of people in Ohio that's been wanting some snow. Maybe two to three inches in the further you go down south. A dusting to an inch there around Columbus. Uh, Columbus. Columbus. And then uh, in northern Pennsylvania, two to three inches. Four or five as you get further north there along the mountains. It's like it's going to be a little bit less of an event than we did have on the last look at this, but around one to two inches there. Uh, still over here near Buffalo and Rochester. Four to five inches getting up into those eight inches over here near Kingston. Four to five inches and as you get closer to the lake here you know you can start to get you know six seven maybe even up to 16 inches there uh, and then over here 10 11 9 12 inches just to the north of albany right on the border of new york and vermont there four to five inches for most of vermont and as you get higher in the mountains you get higher totals over here in new hampshire same kind of deal and then over here in maine same kind of deal i mean four to five inches and as you get up in the mountains more snow moving over looking at the pacific northwest i mean we are going to have a an absolute 
absolute fire hose of moisture that's going to be coming in from this way. And it's just going to pile snow upon snow upon snow, really from these mountains over here into the mountains down a little bit more to the south and east and all the way down into Utah as well. More snow over here near Idaho Falls and Pocatello there. So lots of snow coming for the Pacific Northwest. Definitely going to have to pay attention to that, especially if you live in those mountainous regions as it's going to be hard to travel around. But your infrastructure is usually pretty good in terms of handling the snow. Not only are you guys getting a lot of snow up there in the mountains, you're also getting a lot of wind in the lower elevations here in the Pacific Northwest. Look at this, 30 to 40 miles per hour all in this region right here uh, in Washington and Oregon, pushing this even further. Those stronger winds start to build up a little bit more with 40, almost 50 mile per hour winds extending all the way from Bend into Boise Twin Falls around Idaho Falls there as well. Maybe a little bit of higher winds too, 40 mile per hour wind gusts possible on the border here of Nevada and Utah and then uh, pushing this forward just a little bit further here you see those winds push uh, even into Wyoming here and Colorado mainly in the mountainous regions but I mean we could get up to 50 mile per hour wind gusts even approaching 60 mile per hour wind gusts uh, as this storm moves through and look at this a 60 mile per hour wind gust is going to be possible for something in Wyoming going into Colorado and New Mexico so definitely some potent winds over here in the Pacific Northwest going into the Rockies speaking of potent Tint winds uh, over down here on the 11th. You can see that we're going to have some potent winds uh, moving into Texas and New Mexico as this storm starts to sweep into the region. That low pressure system is going to really bring up these winds here. And then even by 11 p.m. on the 11th, I could have some gustier winds over here near Little Rock and Memphis, but mainly talking about a little bit further to the north here. As we start to get some snow, we could get a large area here of 30 to 40 mile per hour winds. Some of these winds might just be high enough, especially around these lake regions uh, to get up into those blizzard conditions. So definitely I uh, got to watch out for that. And then as the storm tracks across the country, look at this from Indiana all the way into Ohio, uh, going into Kentucky, down into the Appalachian Mountains here. You see that by 3 p.m. we're getting 50 to 40 mile per hour winds, maybe even getting up into those 60 in the higher elevations um, for a lot of people. So definitely be paying attention to that. Could cause some power outages there. And then as this thing moves off of the coast, here we go again, talking about high winds along the coast, uh, potentially 40 mile per hour winds, you know, extending from South Carolina into North Carolina, you start to get a little bit higher as you get to the coast around 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. And then over here near Maryland and Delaware, 60 mile per hour wind gusts, maybe even getting up into those 70 mile per hour wind gusts. Um, and then by the time we get to 3 a.m. over here, uh, you can see that, uh, you know, 60, 70 mile per hour wind gusts are going to be possible up there. And then pushing this even further to the north, uh, you can see 60, 70 mile per hour wind gusts again on the coast of Maine and those are going to extend inland causing more power outages pretty much for the whole state of Maine. Not everybody's going to lose power of course but people with worse infrastructure and even some people with good power infrastructure may lose power there. One thing I do want to notice uh, as these storms start to move through we are going to get some gustier winds a little bit further south moving into Nashville again Kentucky and then northern Alabama all the way extending to the coast and this will be associated with thunderstorms this time but out front not so much. These are gradient winds. These back here associated with thunderstorms you know 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts is going to be um, overspreading this area too and that's going to be happening at around 12 p.m there on the 12th one more thing i want to touch on before we talk about the severe weather updates is we do have a little strip here of icing of maybe even getting it to a half an inch according to the nam 12k it's probably overdone a little bit so you know maybe a quarter of an inch to almost a half an inch is going to be possible in some areas but this can cause significant impact and power outages all by itself as as well and then you add the winds on top of that uh, could have a little area here where you could have uh, an, an increasing amount of worsening travel conditioning and power outages now talking about the severe weather threat we do have an enhanced risk now and that's going to be for parts of Shreveport Texarkana Hope Camden El Dorado and Hot Springs we got a slight risk around that for Little Rock Pine Bluff uh, Tyler Longview Monroe Baton Rouge near College Station and then also we have a marginal risk around that for Jonesboro going into Memphis Gulfport New Orleans Beaumont, Houston, Dallas, McKinney, and Killeen. So if you live in this area here, you are definitely going to want to be weather aware as we go into tomorrow. This is going to be a dangerous day for some folks, especially in this orange region, which is highlighting an elevated potential for severe weather. Why is this risk here? Well, let's talk about it. We got a 10% tornado risk for strong tornadoes again, uh, but this time it's over here near Shreveport, Hope, Texarkana, Camden, El Dorado, and Hot Springs, the same areas that were in that enhanced risk. Then we got a 5% tornado risk around that for Little Rock, Pine Bluff, uh, 
Monroe, Jackson, Greenville, just to the east of Tyler, Texas, extending all the way down into Baton Rouge as well. Then we got a 2% around that for Fort Smith, Lafayette, New Orleans, and just to the other half of Jackson, Mississippi there. So a little large area here, <laughs> a little large, pretty decent sized area here of a tornado risk. If you live in any of these areas, make sure you're paying attention. We also have a damaging wind risk of 30% for 60 mile per hour winds and above 15% around that in this yellow region, and then a 5% around that. Then we also have a hail risk as well. A little bit of a hashed hail risk here uh, going into Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. And then we got a 15% around that uh, for quarter sized hail and above and a 5% around that for quarter sized hail and above. As you can see, we do have a pretty large area here for severe weather. We have a marginal risk, a uh, slight risk, and an enhanced risk. And then enhanced risk is, is encompassing Montgomery, Dothan, Albany, Macon, South Atlanta, Augusta, Columbia, going into North Carolina as well. We got a slight risk extending from Southern Virginia down into Florida, into Mississippi, through Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. Then we have a marginal risk that extends uh, from uh, Kentucky and Tennessee and goes into Arkansas, Louisiana. This is for day two here. So definitely a day that you're going to want to be paying attention as we do have yet another 10% hash risk for tornadoes. This is that same kind of thing that was issued last time when we got EF2s, EF3s. So it's definitely a day where you're going to want to pay attention uh, weather-wise. And the same people that are in that enhanced risk are going to be in this tornado risk. Uh, this is an elevated tornado risk. Definitely want to pay attention. Then we have an ex pretty big area here of a 5% tornado risk. I mean, look at this from Rocky Mount all the way down to Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, Gulfport, Jackson, Meridian, Tuscaloosa, Mobile, Panama City, Apalachicola, and then a 2% around that, sending all the way down into Palm Bay, Northport, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Tupelo. Lots and lots of people are going to be dealing with severe weather. And not only do we have a tornado threat, we have another uh, enhanced region of uh, damaging winds. This is going to be for 75 miles per hour and above for Atlanta, Macon, and Augusta, Columbia, Charlotte, Greensboro, and then we also have uh, a, a a big area here for hail as well. Uh, uh, this is going to be a 15% for quarter-sized hail and above. It's going to be from southern North Carolina down into South Carolina, uh, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, and parts of Mississippi. Then we got a 5% around that extending from southern Virginia through Florida all the way over here to Virginia. So a lot of people got to pay attention to this storm as it comes through as it is going to be impactful and it is going to be dangerous. So make sure you have a plan to be weather aware and to deal with these storms as they come through. Now coming over to the models in order to kind of give you guys a picture and a timing in order to tell you approximately when this thing is going to come through and, you know, what kind of kinematics that we're dealing with. Uh, so starting off with the timing, you can see as we come into the 11th here, uh, into early morning on the 12th, we start to see some storms fire here near Tyler, Texas, and those start to move uh, through Shreveport. And this is where that main area for that tornado risk is going to be. Uh, with that strong tornado risk. So starting at around 6 a.m. is when it's really going to start to happen there. And then uh, pushing this even further, uh, these storms move into Mississippi, down and through Jackson, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, uh, start to have some prefrontal storms over here near Meridian. Uh, this is going to be that main area, though, of initial severe weather. And then as we push into Alabama by around 11 a.m. here, we start to see uh, some stronger storms start to fire out here. And then this is going to be the beginning uh, of that uh, more dangerous tornado risk. And as you see, as this moves all to the east, where do the storms go? I thought we had a strong tornado risk. Well, you see, there is some disagreement in the models uh, with the amount of moisture that is going to be available for these storms. So although the potential is there, not every single model is showing a dangerous tornado day. So just keep that in mind as we get into this event. I really do think the 12th here uh, going into the evening, this is around tw uh, tw 2 p.m. Uh, as these storms start to really really move into that strong tornado zone, uh, it's it, it's still up in the air. It's not guaranteed. I, I want to stress that it's a little bit more conditional than the last event, but it's definitely, you know, the kinematics are there. If we can get enough moisture, things are really going to start to be dangerous. So um, even though you can't see a bunch of big bad storms on here, just know that this model could be inaccurate here. One of the models is going to win and, um, and and give us a better depiction. And as of right now, uh, the NAM is kind of on the conservative side of things. You can see not a whole lot happens with this line uh, as it moves off to the east. Now looking at the HRRR, you can see as it starts, it starts 
a little bit earlier here at around 1 a.m. over here near Dallas going through Tyler, Texas. And then by the time it gets into, uh, you know, Arkansas going into Louisiana, it's a little bit stronger here. Look at here. Uh, a lot more convection, a couple more prefrontal cells in that favorable environment for tornadoes as we go into 4 a.m. there for Louisiana and Arkansas. And then as this moves into Mississippi and Alabama, look at this. All of these prefrontal cells that will have the potential here to potentially produce a tornado tornado or two um, and then as we push even further you can see the the uh the h triple r kind of loses steam as well as we come into here but some models are indicating a little bit more moisture and so just given like the uh the the shear environment that is going to be out here let's kind of look at that uh you can see really strong upper level winds there five in the in the upper levels and then really strong lower level winds as well and that is directly over where this uh, convection is happening here um so you know Know, it's, it's something that we definitely got to watch. I mean, the spin in the atmosphere is going to be there. The big question mark, and I'm talking, I'm talking not not like a not like a big question mark, but like a, a real big question mark is going to be: Are we going to have the moisture move out in front of the storms enough to cause that significant tornado threat? But uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. It's just going to be one of those days where you got to be weather aware. But it, it, there's definitely a scenario where not a lot happens. All right, last thing we're going to be talking about is this big, I think, you know, technically it's better to say Canadian blast, um, but, you know, Canadian invasion of cold air. Um, you know, there is some Arctic air mixed in there for sure, but I think it's predominantly Canadian air. Um, but anyways, you know, you, you're going to have some um, Arctic slash Canadian air make it into the United States here. And as you can see, we could have a large swath here of negative degree temperatures in this whites and teal colors here. Uh, all represent negative degrees and um, yeah pretty large area extending from Montana down into Kansas Missouri Illinois uh, Wisconsin there and then everywhere to the north of that as well uh, could experience I mean look at that negative 22 degrees possible there in South Dakota and then that's eventually uh, just kind of kind of stick around for a little bit kind of propagate uh, to the east a little bit move into you know uh, over here near Iowa and Kansas Missouri uh, Illinois and just to the north of that and one thing i do want to note here is that as we get those wind chills uh, these negative temperatures could extend a little bit further to the south maybe some scenarios say that it could nose into just the northern portions of mississippi and alabama and believe it or not uh, the next storm we're going to be talking about is a low pressure system that could ride into these below freezing temperatures maybe even dropping uh, some snow in the southeast and the ozarks so that's going to be something that we're going to have to watch but i think it's a little bit too early to be talking about that storm so we're gonna let this storm that we're gonna be dealing with right now going into tomorrow the next day first then we'll start talking about that low pressure system if that snow signal is still there but yeah that's it for me thank you guys for watching make sure you hit the like and subscribe and i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day see ya